name is, is Dr. Bob Sutor. I'm a Vice President at IBM Research, and I'm one of the leaders of our quantum computing program. Let me explain it this way. So, the computers that you use now, so your smartphones, your laptops, the computers on the internet, the cloud, we'll call those classical computers. And there's a very basic question, which is, can those computers solve any problem eventually? So, if we make them more powerful, if we add more memory to them, if we add more storage, are those suitable for any type of problem that we might imagine? And so far, you know, if you think of the smartphones and the millions of apps and things like that, the use in artificial intelligence, it seems pretty good. It seems like they're very powerful. However, the answer is no. In fact, there are things that those types of computers can't do. Um, particularly when uh, we talk about representing things in nature. And so we're talking about atoms and molecules. So let me give you an example. So um, the caffeine molecule, right? So this is the molecule in coffee and uh, in cola. You know, it's the one that keeps you awake. And um, many people love this molecule. They may not know it, but they really love this molecule many times a day. Uh, it's a very simple molecule, not very complicated. But if you were to look at all the information that represented the chemical structure of that, and the energy, and the electrons, and the protons, um, well, one, that sounds technical, okay, I know. But if you were to get all that information together, you would need 10 to the 48th bits. So a bit is 0 or 1. 10 to the 48th is 1 with 48 zeros. So a million is one with six zeros. A billion is one with nine zeros. So this seems like a big number, right? It's so big that that number could be comparable to 10% of all the atoms in the Earth. That is, you would need storage as much as 10% of the size of our planet just for one molecule at one moment. Classical computers never going to do that. However, a quantum computer, because a quantum computer is based on the principles of quantum mechanics, which is how we believe things really work. Atoms, molecules, you, the air, materials, everything. Because it uses those same principles, it's able to represent things like nature. Right? Things that we, we hope to compute with. And we also hope to use it for artificial intelligence. We hope to use it for maybe city planning with traffic congestion, uh, logistics, that is, moving materials around the country, and maybe even some sort of fintech applications as well. Okay. Now, I'm only talking about storage. Now, to do something interesting, you would need a lot more powerful power as well. Uh, the, the largest quantum computers we have today, right now, are about 50 qubits. They are 50 qubits. So a qubit is the replacement idea for a bit, which is a classical computer idea. So a qubit is much more complicated. It has access to much more uh, what I think of as computational room, uh, and for storage as well. You could fit all, all that information for caffeine in 160 qubits. So we're not there yet. But it's completely impossible forever classically. And it looks like it should be possible, as you said, to store the information. Yeah. And then as the quantum computers get bigger, to actually compute.